Welcome back to the Delaware Way. If you've been watching the show for a while, you'll know that I've called our next guest, the Bernie Sanders of Delaware. Representative John Kowalko is here. He's the Democrat from the 25th District. As always, thanks for being here. Thank you, thank you. And now the Delaware primary counts and Bernie yes. Sanders very well may be coming to the state. Have you met him before? Oh, yeah, I did, actually. In December of uh, 2014, I met him at a SIX conference. SIX is the uh, it's a progressive group. Uh, it's a state exchange, uh, information exchange, I believe. And Van Jones was the uh, one of the creators of that. And in Washington, in December of 2014, he was a speaker. And I went up to him afterwards, and I said, if you come to Delaware, I guarantee you'll win it. Does he have a shot here? I mean, there's I, been no I polling, right? I think he has a shot, because I saw, I saw 350 people at that opening of his headquarters. and. And that dwarfed the, uh, the, the Hillary turnout at her headquarters was less than 100. I mean, it was enthusiastic. And it, 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 the range was young, old, in between. It was not just the college student crowd that you read about. And you're endorsing him and you're yes. campaigning for him? You're raising money for him? Yes, I actually contributed more to, to the Sanders campaign than I've ever contributed to any campaign in my, my life. And you opened up the headquarters for him. I so, helped and, and Delaware is in play. I mean, it's the same day as the primaries for Pennsylvania and Maryland, so I don't understand why the candidates wouldn't stop here. It would be easy. I hope so. You know, I mean, maybe it's, it's pure numbers. You know, the numbers aren't big enough, but I, I think he's the type of candidate that does like to go to places, though. They're out of the way. He seems to feed off of that, uh, that crowd enthusiasm. And plus, state wins are becoming a big thing. Yep. And so it's another state win, and it's mm -hmm. another one he could put in his column. Yeah, when you start talking Delaware. about delegate and delegate counts, and it gets closer and closer and closer, then you start talking about how many states did you win, you know, and how many states you're going to bring to the, to the matter. Let's talk about something that's important to both Bernie Sanders and to you, to reinstate Glass-Steagall. Now, you have a bill in the legislature in um, Delaware to do just that, but you have no power over that. That's no, a federal and, law. And that's, that's why my it's not a bill, it's a House concurrent resolution, which has the effect of, of, a, uh, of officially notifying Congress that we the Delaware delegation wants them to reinstate Glass-Steagall. It's called a House concurrent resolution. It is to urge Congress to reinstate Glass-Steagall. I've already had this uh, dialogue at, at a national level in uh, 2013 when I introduced a resolution at the National Council of State Legislators to urge Congress to reinstate Glass-Steagall. It's so important. It's so important to Why our financial... Why is it financial that important? Business. Explain. Uh, well, in 1933, Glass-Steagall was put in place because the, uh, to separate the commercial banks from the investment banks and to separate commercial banks from being allowed to uh, engage in investment. The whole premise was that commercial banks uh, would guarantee a deposit $250,000 through the feds. Uh, so there was no risk to them. So them taking that money that was no risk and investing it can lead to a temptation to invest it in uh, some uh, rather sketchy type things, but not, not necessarily guaranteed to succeed or not. They had a free pass. And the whole idea is that this led to, to our crash. This led to our yes, financial... I, but, it, but, it, but there's an argument against that as well, and I know Hillary Clinton espouses to this argument, and many Republicans do too, because it wouldn't have prevented Lehman Brothers, it wouldn't have prevented Bear Stearns, it wouldn't have prevented Merle Lynch from going under. But, the, uh, but there are, if you read the statement from a public uh, citizen made to the Maryland General Assembly, who's considering this type of resolution also, uh, there, there are very significant points where the Lehman, Lehman debacle failure was contributed to by the fact that there was banking industries and they were forced to uh, to buy Lehman and Lehman was forced to buy another industry. So they're all integrated. And actually, the mortgage business is integrated. And even in the insurance industry is integrated into this uh, corporate banks and commercial banks being allowed to become investment vehicles. But it certainly is a legitimate, I, I would say, trench that prevents a, that natural instinct to just like go willy-nilly with the investors' money shareholders my taxpayers money because we we lost 13 trillion dollars the american economy during the crash and that doesn't affect just the banks or the bank investors or, or 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 even the mortgage holders that affects every one of us you me anybody that has a penny in, in any kind of investment vehicle whether it be mutual fund or not suffer through that, that that anxiety and that reality of an economic downfall jobs were lost I, millions of jobs were lost and this is all a result of the fact that we do not regulate the industries we should be regulating with a, a sincerity and a formality that will disallow them from being tempted and acting on that temptation. Representative Kowalko, as always, I appreciate you coming in. John Kowalko, who represents the 25th District, and he is, uh, as you might be able to tell, a Democrat. The Delaware Way continues after this.